Hey again guys, welcome back to Long Horse Junction again. Um, so this will be the third part of my old layout, the first one I did um, in Tasmania. There may be another part, I'm just not sure how many clips I'll need to just see how long the clips are when I put them together. Um, so this will be the fourth part, oh sorry, the third part. There will probably be a fourth part. Um, I haven't had a chance to get anything sorted out with the new one. I am still, I just, basically I just haven't had time to try and um, spend a little bit of time sussing out some materials and I'm trying to work out whether I want to just do a flat baseboard sort of type one and then put the, the track on it and then build um, you know the terrain off that or whether I want to build like a, I guess you'd call it a skeleton type baseboard and then what like, frame and then just have like a thin board run around where the track runs and then build the scenery below it and above that um with like so the you know that foam board and bits and pieces and you know plaster cloth and all that sort of stuff i'm just haven't quite decided how i want to do that i think i'm probably going to go the latter not the flat board version um but I just I need to price up materials and whatever just because of the costs of things of nowadays and just see where that runs. I just haven't had a chance to go sort that out. And here comes the crappy rain. It's gonna be noisy. Anyway, enjoy the video. Um, and um, there'll probably be another one and then there'll be I think there'll be just one more after the next one, which will be a layout that was I did in about 2016 17. Um here in New Zealand that I didn't really do much of. Um, I sort of got the baseboard laid out and I was starting to get the tracks sort of sorted out. Um, but it was quite a bit bigger than that, this first one. Um, but yeah. And then hopefully we'll get into some, doing some bits and pieces the next few days. And I'm hoping to try and go get some other little bits and pieces for the actual model trains themselves. I still haven't found the I've had my partner looking, and I've been at mum and dad's a couple of times to try and suss out where the extra track was and some of the, um, some of the little model cars and bits and pieces, other stuff I had. Um, I had a few, I, I worked out the other day just while I'm watching some of the videos that I downloaded um, that I had like a <clears throat> little tractor and a, a Land Rover and a you know, 70s Triumph and a couple of other bits and pieces and I just haven't been able to find them yet so I'm not quite sure where they've, where they've gone and where they've disappeared to but anyway we'll carry on and um, we'll stop talking before this rain gets noisy There you going guys <coughs> um, been doing a bit more of a layout um, I've finally got the end of this um, hill here finished um, I did have to um, pull some of the plastic cloth back off it hadn't set properly or hadn't sort of bound together. Um, how I found that it was um, <clears throat> I had the, the track made on around here last weekend and I had the trains running around just to make sure everything was sort of going to work alright and um, there was a bit of a hump that in here somewhere um, as the train was coming off the bridge and running around it would go over the hump and every now and again it would derail and pop the front wheels over and so I can't have that, so I um I cut I was gonna cut the plastic cloth off or just off from the riser sort of part way up and pull it off and then lay some more on there when I um got the new rolls and when I pulled it up um it was sort of floppy from about where those rocks are sort of back this way um to you know sort of halfway because that's where about where I finished. And when I pulled it up, yeah it just there must have been a couple of strands still hooked on and um, pulled it and then the whole piece sort of went all queer and floppy and I thought, oh god. So it sort of sort of felt a bit soft but you know, it felt like it was hard enough but yeah, no, when I pulled it up it just all fell to pieces and separated and so I pulled it back to where those rocks are and um, yeah, and um, redid it when I got my plaster cloth yesterday. So I've finished that off yesterday and then I'll put some colour on it today and um, I just had to fix a couple of wee pulses there. There was just 
still a little bit softer in the bottom where I burnt there must have been a couple of spots where I missed the double layer you know, it was just a wee bit soft so I put a wee bit extra in there as well and um, I sort of just made up a bit of a temporary portal in the meantime I'll, um, I'll get another end for it and put it on there and, and tidy that up over the next uh, couple of weeks or whenever and um, I've just finished this end as well um, got that all sorted uh, yeah, I bought three rolls and unfortunately the third roll um, the, I rolled well, probably about half a metre off it and um, then discovered that the the rest of it, well not the rest of it, but probably about a good metre and a half or well, thereabouts was only part of the wood that had a big floor on the end of the roll well, it must have been like, I don't know, off the end of a sheet or something like that and it was, was probably only well, probably two thirds to three quarters full width so there was a good metre and a half that was probably like that so I lost a, you know, quite a lot you know, because it was, I couldn't overlap it so much and I was like, you know, ended up having to piss around and I just, yeah, I'd lost all my overlap so I ended up only doing this piece because that's where I sort of run out I was going to have it sort of a bit more fuller in here and then run out, back down towards the other end I reckon I probably should have got a bit that far if I hadn't um, been so short with that piece being like that um, I mightn't have got that far but I would have got a, you know I would have got a reasonable chunk in here to make it look a bit more how I wanted it but yeah I had to sort of finish it short like that make it a bit look a bit like the other end which I'm a wee bit disappointed with but I didn't really want to have to go buy another roll. I probably should have taken that one back, but it was a bit of a pain because it's 50 kilometres away to, to go get it, so I didn't really want to have to run back all the way over there to, to do that. But I did take a couple of photos of the roll, so when next time I'm over there, I'll have a word to the shop owner and just have a bit of a moan and just you know, let them know that that's what the roll is like. Yeah, and I'm going to make this here a, um, and here I've left it sort of flatter. I'm going to make it a bit like a, um, sort of a lookout point. I'll, um, I'll finish this off and I'll actually, I'll mould a bit more of a road in there yet. And, um, with some, just some, some plaster or something and I'll, and I'll build a road up into there. And, um, yeah, so, so the cars can come up and have it sort of like a little lookout point over, over the train and the rest of the of the area and um, yeah so that's what I've been doing here and um, when I was getting the plaster cloth I bought this little um, steam train shed now, it's got doors at both ends it's by um, Hornby it was just one that you had sitting there one of the, the resin ones so here yeah, I bought that thought that would look quite good on the layout just a wee single one um, I will buy another um, sort of train shed workshop I'll try and buy a double one and I'll fit it over in a couple of the other tracks too as well all the um, the sidings and um, I'll get something in there something you can put a couple of sort of longer like big steam locos or like an A4 or something like that some of the long ones I'll get something you can fit them in you know, and do work on them you know sort of thing and um, hopefully after over, over the weekend I'll I'll get some uh, earth undercoat on the tidy up the rest of it and um, I'll get the rest of my um, track back down properly I'll start blowing that down and uh, do some more ballasting yeah and um, also when I was there I bought a couple of bags of the uh, the coarse wood and scenics turf and, um, a couple of different colours mix them together so I'll I'll really play with that and I'll do this piece in here first just to get a bit of an idea what it looks like I'll start in there I'll just do the basic turf for a start off and then as I get I'll get some shrubs and bits and pieces and some of the shrubby stuff and make 
do some more, but I'll get a bit of I'll get a bit of the grass down there and sort of see what it looks like for colour and see if I'm happy with that. Yeah, like I may buy buy another colour and mix it in onto it or something like that, just to you know, get a bit more variation in it, so it's not all sort of the one colour. Yeah, so I'll do that over the week weekend too and get a bit more into it and get some ballasting done. Now I better get that other track around. Down. When the riser down, I'll have to, I'm guessing I'm going to have to glue that down because I want me to nail it down because of the riser. Um, yeah. And I'll do a wee bit more research on my bridge. I'll um, start having a look on the um, internet. So that's a, a, some of the sort of style bridges and I'll get a bit more idea for um, what to sort of make it like, you know, put a bit, bit more structure in it and put a bit more, you know, a bit more of an authentic look. There you go guys. Welcome to another video. Um, I've decided to call my um, layout uh, Limestone Hills Junction. Um, the main reason why I've thought about that is because when I've been doing my grass over here and um, just my first layer you know um, with the having the sort of the yellower and sort of earth undercoat that I put on like I will put an extra couple of layers over there and sort of darken it up a bit but this other side where it's quite yellowy reminded me of uh, back over in New Zealand in a place called Lime Hills and um, where they you know, dig up a lot of lime for, for fertilizer and stuff like that and you yeah, like you can see a lot of the, the rock and bits and pieces sticking out of like all the you know sides of mountains and everything and it's really sort of quite bright sort of yellowy sort of limey sort of colour so I thought this had just popped into my head and I thought oh well you know, looks like that so that's what I'll call it this is what I've been up to anyway. Um, done a little bit more ballasting around this side, but I've done a, quite a bit around this side. Um, and um, got a bit of the grass on. And um, I glued a few rocks on, and I was going to, you know, before I decided I was going to go with the Lion Hills thing, um, I was going to sort of paint them grey and boil that to bits and pieces. So the, the few rocks I put on. Got to touch up a few areas. I've painted them all the same colour as the rest of it. So when I um, put my grass and all my shrubs and everything else, like I'll leave a bit of them poking out here and there, and, and they'll represent the with the other little bits that don't get covered. They'll represent the the lime hill sort of look. Um, yeah, I thought that'll that'll work out quite good. I'm really happy with my the way everything sort of line coming out here. Um, you can sort of see like there's bits and pieces sort of sticking out so it looks sort of quite authentic with the, you know how <clears throat> things just haven't can't grow in some some areas and it's it's looking really good and I'm quite happy with how it's coming out I've sort of just finished this this end of it just a few minutes ago and it's uh, I'm quite happy with how it's coming out it's looking really good I'm going to think about turning this into a bit of a lake area like just a small area and I'm going to Put something like a little weir or something like that. Put a bit of a mound in here. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do that and turn this into a bit of a, in, like just a bit of an end of a of a small lake or something like that. And I'm gonna put a another little pond area in here just for a bit of water feature on the layout. Um, like I thought the ballasting and that would be sort of quite tedious, but I'm actually really enjoying it. Like it's. Um, and I'll just turn a bit of music on and, and just keep puddling away and it's amazing actually how how relaxing it is. Uh, for the first time doing it, like you know, I thought it was gonna be one of those sort of sort of quite boring jobs, but it's been quite quite therapeutic, it's quite strange. But you know, the old layout's coming out quite good. As I said on as I get a little bit further along here I'm gonna turn this into a um <clears throat> like a look at here, I'll just put a wee bit of wee bit of wood up there. I'm gonna gonna do a wee bit more plaster work on 
over top of that and just build that into a little, little bit of a road up onto the up to the lookout. Um, so hopefully I'll get that over done over the next few days. So I just haven't so sort of, as I get a little bit further around to here, but I'm going to run out of grass shortly. So yeah, I don't think I'll get a lot further. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll do a heap more ballasting. I'll I'll go as far as I can with what I've got. I reckon I'll get the bulk of it. Um, fortunately, with having the, the tunnel, like um, you know, I want to go on so far, and that'll save me a bit. But yeah, I, I reckon I'll come close to having enough ballast in the little jar. Um, yeah. But man, yeah, we go through the PVA doing this. <laughs> quite surprising how fast you go through it especially when you get onto the grass and stuff like that you know sort of painting the whole area with, with PVA to get her to glue down you know initially and then I haven't actually like done your like you sort of a PVA wash over top just to lock everything down yet I've just done the sort of like the underneath one and then put it sprinkled everything on top yet apart from a, a little bit of the ballasting down the in the middle the rest of it's just been sort of glued down on like you know, with the ballast sort of sprinkled over top, but yeah, I haven't done the sort of the, the wash you do over top to, to lock it all down yet. I'm sort of just not, I'm gonna have to watch a few more videos to make sure I get that right so I don't sort of wash in, so I don't make a mess of it. But yeah, no, I'm really happy with how things come along. I reckon the Lime Hills theme's gonna work quite well. Especially once you, know, you get a few bushes and shrubs and trees and fences and all sorts of stuff in here, I, I reckon she'll be coming along really well. I can't wait to sort of get round into the to the bigger area, but I thought I'd start in the smaller, easier bit first. Well, it's probably not really easier, but just the smaller area first. So sort of get my sort of get my groove going and figure out how to do it. Hey, young guys. Welcome back to Lion Hills Junction. So this is what I've been up to over the last week or so, or the last couple of days, I should say. Um, just to be quick with the update, show what I've been doing. Um, I've run out of ballast here um, with the first bag that I bought from Woodland Scenics, um, the uh, medium grey blend. It was a reasonable size bag, one of the bigger bags, not the smaller ones. So this is as far as she went. Um, I managed to get all the way around here. So I've only just got this bit to do, plus the rail yard when I get it. So I reckon another bag will do it. Um, finally, got my point on the way. Um, I managed to get hold of them during the week, and uh, that dodgy point has been replaced and on its way back. Be good because then I'll get a do my rail yard, so I better start buying the track for that. Yeah, uh, um, and uh, I've managed to spread my grass to about here. A um, bit of a light dusting over here when I was just getting them finished, but and I've got a wee bit done on my uh, lookout point that I was going to build into the layout. I've tried to make it look a, a bit like it's been sealed at some stage. And then uh, that sort of started to break up, and they poured some like some gravel or something over top of it, and it's then sort of started washing away over sort of a year or so, or, or a few years or whatever. Um, I managed to get this plastered in, um, where I had that bit of board in to build my road up to. So I've done that, um, and I've left the gap in the ballast here for my road to go through for the. To, through to the layout so it'll be a road through here and then it'll be turn off up obviously up to the lookout and then it'll go through and around the back of the trains and then there will eventually be a a road over the three tracks and then um, on the other side hopefully about the pointers I'll have my, have my little country station and I'll have a, a bit of a tracker in the back and there'll be a car park over sort of where the uh, where the controller is um, and then I'll have another main, other main road going into the 
into the middle somewhere where I've got to get some, some buildings yet. Um, I've got an idea, pretty good idea now what I want in there. I've just got to do a bit more research and see what I can try and see what I can get locally to fit the sort of what I want and um, just get a bit more idea on sizes and so I can just have a bit more of an idea of layout. I'll probably depend, you know, I might change the layout of the road a little bit. But um, yeah, you can sort of see where I've sort of drawn the lines in here, just to get an idea of what I wanted. Um, this is going to stay here, you know, I'm sort of 99% sure of that. Um, I think it's going to be better than over there, I think, just because of the, the yeah, extra piece on the side. Um, that's going to encroach from a road that I want to run to the side. So I've decided to put it here, and um, I'm going to have a wee car park in here somewhere. With enough parking spaces for five or six cars. So, um, yeah. That's basically what I've been up to. There you go, guys. Welcome back to Long Hills Junction. Um, another quick wee update. Um, obviously, I've been putting a wee more grass on. Um, this is my third and fourth bag that I've put on. Um, I'll sort of tidied up most of over here and uh, got round and tinned over here um, this is the, the grass that I'm buying the uh, medium green and the light green uh, coarse turf from Woodland Scenics so I've used four of those bags together so far um, this is what I've got done, just what you can see, I haven't got down to anything down the other end yet. Um, and I've run out of grass again. I just bought a couple of bags again, and I bought another box of uh, another bag of um, ballast, but I haven't done any more of that. I've just sort of been concentrating a bit more on placement of layout and bits and pieces, working out buildings and stuff over the weekend. So, but yeah, like I've tidied up a wee bit around here. Put, bit more through here um, and sort of done in through here and over the top that's sort of really about it um, I've worked out a placement of some, some of the buildings I want to buy um, I've had a look through sort of a few different websites and bits and pieces and I know the woodland scenic stuff's probably a little bit dear but I quite like some of the some of their things um, so I'm going to get a um, a little machine workshop that's going to go in here opposite the uh, the um, the two train train buildings I'm going to have or we'll state train sheds, steam sheds, whatever you want to call them. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get there's a little one on the Woodland Scenics thing, just a, like a little country type machine shop. So I'm going to, I'm going to buy that and that'll fit in. In this area here, um, I've just got it roughly marked out where it should sit, so that's why I've sort of left that bit of grass free in the meantime. And uh, I'm going to buy a, I think of what they call them, Mick, Mick Craft or Mick Claft or whatever they call themselves over in the UK. One of the card ones. Um, I'm going to buy one of the card sheets in here, double so sheet. Um, I'm going to buy one of those to go in here, beside the other one, leave a track in between, and then I'll have it covering two. Um, and then over here, I'm going to have a, another scene from Woodland Scenics, um, two houses that are spotted on there, sort of like old, sort of country, sort of, uh, sort of villas, I suppose you'd call them. Um, that's what we call them in sort of New Zealand and Australia, I guess. Um, a couple of small wooden houses with, with quite a bit of scenery. I think they even come with some um, some lamps and bits and pieces outside on the footpaths and bits and pieces like I think they even come with people and I think there's a motorbike and, and one of them and stuff like that. And then I'm going to get a uh, another one from the uh, from the I think Metcraft or whatever you call them. Um, there's a there's a service station. With a lock of the garage and bits and pieces, I'm gonna I'm gonna get that too. Uh, that's gonna take up this area in here. 
you know, they're covering that whole area between the two things and uh, I'm starting to get that as well and then there's a for, through Woodland Scenics there's a, um, another sort of little scene called um, Juices Bike Shop and it's got two or three sort of look like old sort of vintage Harleys and bits and pieces and it's sort of like an old run down sort of mechanics sort of workshop for bikes and uh, like a little little sort of wrecking sort of yard at that side of it so I'm going to get that and stick this in over here and um, I'm going to get sort of like a drive-in sort of diner put it in here because I quite like that sort of hot rod sort of sort of 50s, 60s, early 70s sort of thing so I quite enjoy that sort of some of that American sort of stuff but also like you know like the some of the British stuff looks quite good too but like some of the American stuff like with some things doesn't look quite right for what I'd sort of would have seen back home so there's quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of American and English influence back in New Zealand and here in Australia so I'm going to get the D's diner um, and I think that comes with with um, lights and I think it comes with a car and bits and pieces as well and so does the uh, the bike shop that comes with, with some more lamps and bits and pieces so that comes with they come with quite a wee bit of stuff like they're a wee bit more expensive but um, I think for the price of them they come with quite a bit of kit um, you know they come with people and bits and pieces so like that sort of all adds to the thing the layout and I've decided I'm gonna with this bit of trick um, I'm gonna put a road in here a bit of a roundabout at the end of it or sort of a semi roundabout I suppose and then another wee bit of a road comes back through here and I'm gonna have a grass area in here possibly you can have a grass sort of area maybe a park or something for kids in here um, maybe put like a bit of a war memorial here in the center or something 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 a wee bit like that yeah and sort of just have it so sort of almost almost like it's part of another community but the other community is sort of part of the community is off to the side and this is uh, I think I'm going to sort of head for to make it look a bit like an, ex, an old an ex, part of an old historic um, railway and they've turned it into this and it's three tracks with, with sort of older trains running around and this is sort of what like part of the part of the local community and it's sort of geared towards you know, a bit of a service station and a diner and bits and pieces just sort of like you know that sort of services with the sort of comes part and pass with the with the historic trains of the area well, that's sort of what I'm heading for and then you get people coming and going and bits and pieces sort of all day long and they stop at the diner and bits and pieces and yeah so I think that's sort of where I'm heading so yeah I've got sort of well, three or four buildings sort of picked out and um, up on that top corner where I sort of I put a little flat piece up there I've found a quite a like cool sort of sort of run down falling down cabin from Woodland Scenics too like just a real tiny one and I reckon it would look quite neat up in that corner so it look like an old somebody's old place they lived in like a hundred years ago and she's just sort of only just standing I reckon it would look quite neat up in the corner with a few trees and bits and pieces and bushes around it just for something extra in the layout so that's sort of where I'm here heading I think and um, I will get a um, station I'm still working on what I want there, I've got a couple of ideas, but I've also got to just see how much room with the platform it's going to take up. Um, I'm just still working on it. I'll just need to find a bit more information about the platform. I'll, I think I've got the station I wanted sorted, but I've just got to work out the platform part of it because you got to buy that separately. I'm just, I'm just seeing because I don't want to buy a kit that you know does a massive platform and then have all this left over. Like maybe eventually, like in a few years' time, you know, I might might add on to the layout eventually. But um, depending on you know if I've got my own place a place again, so I've got the, the well, I suppose the permanent space there. I can I can set something up, and I probably will get a, like a little um, signal box box house or something like that, something small, and I'll possibly put it in here somewhere. Or maybe even in the middle here. I'm just I need something like that as well. So that's sort of the the last few bits of building I'm sort of working on. But apart from that, that's sort of where I'm at at the moment. 
So yeah, I've got those the four pieces in here with the few extras and bits and pieces and the little machine shop and the uh, you now the train tube worked out. So um, I think I can get the train tube locally and I'll I'm going to work on see if I can get the service station locally because it's the same brand. So maybe the um, where I normally get my stuff from now I could probably do that. But I haven't seen any of the Woodland Scenics kits for the actual buildings here, so I'll do even inquiry on that. But I mean, otherwise I'll just order them offline. I think if it comes to that. But yeah, that's where I'm heading. Um, I'm quite happy with the way the grass is coming out. Look, like just the the way it sort of falls, if you know. I've still got a wee bit of door, a wee bit of thickening to do up around there, you know, and plus get some bushes and stuff and run around the edges of those mountain bits. I'm just I'm lying how it's lying, you know, just I've just basically um I started just using a spray bottle with um with just the um, PVA and the and the water solution and just spraying it on there and then just shaking that over and that's that actually seems to be working quite well. Like it saves a lot of messing around with the paintbrush like I could just go around the edges with the paintbrush just to get into those bits and pieces that it just hasn't quite spread to. It's nice and quick. Um, I think I did that whole area in about oh, 10 or 15 minutes I think. Just sort of did a wee area at a time and yeah but I need to get a bit more grass in there yet but but yeah no that'll be the, be the next trick I'll I'll start getting into the into the heavier bush stuff and and then I'll start working on the trees, just um, I need to do a wee bit of research on that too, just to see what the what the best option is. Like um yeah, especially like like the made up ones are quite pricey but I just yeah, I need to do a wee bit more research into what it takes to build them and what sort of the cost involved in that too, you know, because one and a half dozen the other I suppose. And I want nice looking trees, I don't want ones that sort of look like you know, I want them to look reasonably real, but without looking to the too fake with the rest of the, you know. I think the layout's coming out quite good, so I want to do a good job. And um, I still haven't looked into the uh, the card that you can get that's like bricks and stones and stuff. I think I'm going to use that on the um, on the bridge by a, um, a sheet of that, that sort of like stone or brick card or something similar. And I think I'll, I'll glue that onto the bridge and, and make that look like it's like stone or brick or or something similar. That's that's where I'm sort of pointing with the bridge. But yeah, alrighty, I think that'll do for today. And uh, catch you next time at uh, Wine Hills Junction. Feel free to comment and subscribe. And uh, any hints and tips or whatever. Um, the other thing I was thinking too, actually just one thinking. Um, anybody got any good tips for for the edging around the, the roads when you do your um, like when you pull your road? Like, because I'll probably mix up some some plaster and or some casting plaster or something like that, or and smooth it out along there. But I just what are people using for the um, edging to like to you know to set your barrier for when you pour the pour it in. That's the other thing I'm looking at because like I know that wooden sense kit kit with the tape's quite expensive. Um, I have a wee bit more research on that and just see how much I need. See how much is in the roll. But if anybody's got any other ideas, what they use um, around the edges if they like pouring paving. Um, yeah, just let me know. Alrighty, I'll leave it at that guys, we'll catch you later on and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Cheers. How you going guys, welcome back to Lime Hills Junction, been doing a wee bit more. Got some more grass over the southern end. Uh, I bought a bag of uh, the Woodland Scenics olive bushes. So I've been dotting that around the place. Um, yeah, just to give you a bit of a look. I sort of haven't really got much further than over here. Um, 
Yeah, you've got to put it around the uh, the um, lookout cow park. I'm just dotted a few pieces in and around the rocks and just down the bottom. I haven't put it heaps on yet. I also just put it on and I'm going to buy a few more bags with different colours and um, do a bit more. This is about what I've been up to over the last week. Um, finally got my uh, new point after sending the dodgy one away. Finally got that back oh, a few days ago. Obviously been doing a wee bit more ballasting. Um, so yeah, I'll get that cleaned up and then I'll do a test to make sure that point does work properly. And the other thing I bought the other day when I bought some more grass in the bushes is um, bought this little uh, XR Ford Falcon. Um, they were built in Australia back in 67, 1967. They did make uh, another three models after this. They made an XT, an XW and an XY. And the XW and XY were quite famous race cars in the uh, GTHO version of them or the V8 you know, they had 351 oh I think they had Cleveland's in both I know they had Windsor's in some of them too but yeah they were quite a quite a quick race car um, obviously see it was one of the like, from one of my opponents um, unfortunately he's never won any races at Bathurst but the, uh, the Falcons definitely did and uh, they raced against the, uh, the Holdens of the era as well. But yeah, this, I'll give you another couple of shots of it. Uh, this is the, the back of it. Had round tail, or had round tail lights. The XT had the same tail light, but it had like, a, instead of that little orange dot in the middle, had a, a line across the tail light. Then the XW and XY had quite different tail lights again. They're sort of almost right around the corner. And this is the front. Again, the XT was almost exactly the same, but uh, the XY and XW were quite a bit different again. Very similar looking car, to just at a general glance, but yeah, um, basically the same body style, but yeah, there was quite a few differences in them, as they got through later through the years. But yeah, this is what I've been up to. Just give me a quick wee shot around here a wee bit further. So you've got a few bushes dotted in and around. So you've got a few in and around this uh, car park area. Not a lot yet. I'll definitely probably add to it a bit once I get some different colours. Done a bit up this rock, around this rock face. As you can see. Yeah. Dotted a few in and around here. So I think I... Uh, uh, no, I was going to, but I didn't run out before there. And put on a few in around this side of the uh, the bridges. We spot down there. But yeah, that's, that's what we've been doing here. So yeah, as I said, I'll get a few more bags and a couple of different colours. See what I can get. I might get some something that's a bit lighter. Maybe a wee bit sort of brighter green, and then I'll get something that's a bit darker, and I'll start dotting that around the place too. And then I'll yeah, start looking at the bigger bushes and then some some trees as well. But I'll slowly build it up in layers and get to where it sort of see me happy with it. And then I'll yeah, add her a different layer again. But yeah, this is about all I've been up to. Alrighty, I think this will do for tonight, and uh, you'll probably see you again in uh, another week or so, when I've done a bit more. Alrighty, I'll feel free to comment and subscribe, and I'll see you next time at uh, Lime Hills Junction. Cheers, see you guys.